1943, during World War II, Nazi troops discovered a mass grave in the forests of Katyn, Russia, containing over 20,000 murdered Poles. The bodies, arranged in 12 layers with hands tied behind their backs, showed clear signs of execution. However, the evidence did not point to the Germans, but to the Soviets. This episode reveals a pre-war tragedy, the tensions between Stalin's Soviet Union and Hitler's Germany. Both leaders, with expansionist ambitions and a deep mutual contempt, were forced to consider unusual alliances. While Stalin sought support from France and the UK unsuccessfully, Hitler explored a pact with the Soviet Union to avoid major conflicts with the West. The Cotton Massacre illustrates how nations manipulate truth for their own ends. The question remains, should the Soviets have been judged for this crime? Share your opinion and subscribe to learn more about historical military events. These were the beginnings of the approaches between Joachim von Ribbentrop, Germany's Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Vyacheslav Molotov, his Soviet counterpart. The negotiations culminated on August 23, 1939, with the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, a non-aggression treaty that offered clear advantages for both countries. Hitler could invade Poland without fear of conflict with the Soviet Union, allowing him to focus on the war against Western powers. Stalin, on the other hand, gained time to strengthen the Red Army. The pact included a secret clause that divided Eastern Europe into spheres of influence. The Baltic countries, Finland, and part of Romania would be under Soviet control, while the rest would be occupied by Germany. Poland would be divided between them. With the security of the pact, Germany invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, followed by the Soviet invasion on September 17. The Polish forces, weakened, collapsed under the joint attack and were defeated in just over a month. Eastern Poland fell under Soviet control, and Stalin initiated a brutal repression. Around 200,000 Polish soldiers and policemen were taken prisoner and sent to concentration camps. Many Polish citizens were also deported. The inhuman conditions in these camps resulted in numerous deaths. Prisoners were interrogated by the NKVD, and those considered staunch enemies of Soviet authority were blacklisted. Approximately 22,000 men were executed, as a result. In March 1940, Stalin and Soviet High Command ordered the execution of thousands of Polish prisoners to weaken Poland and eliminate potential opponents to the communist regime. In April, Thousands of prisoners were transported to the cotton forest in Smolensk, Russia, where they were shot in the back of the head and buried in mass graves. The killing continued until May, with a total of 21,857 victims. The massacre was carried out in secrecy, with no surviving witnesses. However, in June 1941, Hitler broke the non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union and launched Operation Barbarossa, invading Soviet territory. This led to a tense alliance between Stalin and Vladislav Sikorsky, the exiled Prime Minister of Poland in the UK. They signed a peace and military collaboration treaty, freeing many prisoners of war. However, the Polish authorities noticed that many officers were still missing since the Soviet invasion of 1939. The truth took years to come to light. By 1943, the war had turned. Germany and its allies, who had dominated the early years of the conflict, were now on the defensive on the Eastern Front. The Red Army was slowly driving out the invaders from its territory. In April of that year, as Axis forces revisited previously conquered regions, they made a horrifying discovery. In the forests near the village of Cotton, they found a mass grave nearly 30 meters long, filled with bodies arranged in 12 layers. The number of bodies was such that one could not distinguish where one began and the other ended. The stench of decomposition indicated that the crime had been committed years ago. Although the flesh had detached from the bones, the uniforms of the Polish officers were unmistakable. After verifying that no Nazi death squad was behind the massacre, it was concluded that the Soviets were the authors of this mass murder, which occurred during the occupation in 1940. The news reached Joseph Goebbels, the German Minister of Propaganda, who saw an opportunity to increase tension among the Allies. Furthermore, he would use the crime to denounce the atrocities of Bolshevism and, therefore, of the United States and England as their military partners. They organized a Red Cross committee, with neutral and belligerent countries, to investigate the mass graves. 
They even invited Polish prisoners of war to witness the macabre scene, ensuring that there was no doubt about Soviet guilt. The Germans achieved their goal. The Russians immediately denied responsibility for the crime and accused the Nazis of perpetrating it. However, upon learning of this, Sikorsky demanded that the Allies conduct another Red Cross investigation to clarify the massacre. Stalin refused, declaring that Germany's involvement in organizing the analysis demonstrated a conspiracy between the two countries. Soviet-Polish relations deteriorated rapidly. When what happened in Cotton became public, Churchill, the British Prime Minister, when confronted by Sikorsky, could only say, the Soviets can be very cruel. In the spring of 1943, as Soviet troops reclaimed the Smolensk area, a dark chapter in history began to unfold. The NKVD, aware of its guilt in the Cotton Massacre, hastened to erase any trace of its crimes. By eliminating evidence, coercing witnesses, and fabricating false documents, they tried to rewrite history. According to their version, the massacre occurred in 1941, under German occupation. The Soviet investigation, clearly manipulated, exonerated Stalin, and accused the Nazis. Meanwhile, the Western Allies, caught between loyalty to Poland and the strategic need to keep the Soviets as allies, opted for pragmatism. Despite their suspicions about Stalin's responsibility, the USSR's crucial contribution to the war against Germany prevailed. Churchill managed to convince Sikorsky to abandon his insistence on a new Red Cross investigation, accepting the Soviet version as official. Any independent analysis pointing to the Red Army as guilty was censored. As the war progressed, Poland, now under communist rule, aligned its version of events with Moscow's. In 1946, during a Soviet military trial, seven German soldiers were accused of the Cotton Massacre. One of them confessed, under obvious signs of torture, to participating in the burial of thousands of Poles, but his testimony crumbled due to contradictions. The USSR tried to include Germany in the Nuremberg trials for these crimes, but the lack of Nazi evidence and inconsistent testimony prevented it from being considered in those trials. With the onset of the Cold War, the truth about Cotton began to emerge. The Americans conducted a new investigation that concluded, without a doubt, that Stalin's troops were responsible for the massacre. However, Poland's pro-Soviet government vehemently denied this responsibility, censoring any mention of the mass murder in the media. The tragic truth of Cotton remained buried in propaganda and politics, a dark secret that would take decades to be officially recognized. Meanwhile, the Cotton Forest became a symbol of brutality and injustice, a grim reminder of the horrors that war and politics can engender. If a citizen dared to speak of the crime, they risked arrest. Still, several polls defied this. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyzes. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, a people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.